Hi heathens, just a heads up, this is going to be a little bit longer of a video because I think this topic is really important and I have a lot to say about it. Now, no shade to the person that left this comment, please do not pile on. I just saw a lot of comments like this and this is the one that I chose to address. This comment was left on a video where I discussed a 16 year old girl that was sexually abused by her pastor for several years who then stayed in the church for several decades. I got several comments from people saying that the most shocking part of this story was that this woman stayed in the church for several decades after. I just really need us to sit with that for a few moments, that when we hear a story about a 16 year old girl being routinely sexually abused by someone who is in a position of spiritual power over her, the most shocking part to us is that she stayed. Now, for those that might not know, I will say it here, the Christian church, and I think many churches at large, do a very good job of protecting abusers at the expense of the victims. If you watched my video on the SBC sexual abuse report, you should know that that's not rare. It is ubiquitous. The American church primarily cares about power and control, and they will protect the abusers because they have idolized the abusers. Not only are women believed to be second-class citizens in most churches, they also have a lot of negative morality associated with them. We're taught that it's our fault and that we're sinful when men are attracted to us. And we're taught that from a very young age. Being a child, being told that if a man is attracted to us, it's our fault. And as we've seen, going to church authorities likely isn't going to do much except get you shunned and shamed. Now, if you're a woman that's been assaulted, you know that going to the legal authorities also won't do much except get you blamed and shamed. So we now have a 16-year-old girl who is manipulated by her pastor, someone in spiritual authority over her, a grown man who not only manipulated her, but sexually assaulted her multiple times and likely managed to blame her in some way for what was happening and then guilt and shame her into silence. So the victim, now blaming herself largely, probably doesn't feel comfortable going to her family or her church or the authorities because she thinks it's her fault and she's ashamed. Not only that, she thinks she will lose her community and likely her family. Fundamentalist religion warps your brain, and oftentimes your family will disown you if you tell them that someone they idolize in the church sexually assaulted you. Now, as we've discussed, women are not often believed in these situations, let alone young girls. So we have a minor blaming herself for the abuse from an adult man who is now living with that guilt and shame and fear that she's going to lose everything she's known. Now, if women aren't believed when they tell their story at the time it's happening, how much less likely are they to be believed if they tell it years after? And for those who know how trauma and guilt work, you know that it doesn't always manifest in healthy ways. Women in the church are taught to sacrifice themselves on the altar of peacekeeping. They're taught that it's their job, their purpose. Think of all the damage you'll do if the truth comes out. Think of all the people you'll hurt. We shouldn't be asking why she didn't leave. We should be asking why this system taught her she should stay.